Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to the Digital Today's podcast. I am Dave. I'm Ron. And, Ron, we have a super special guest for episode 191. Requested to be on. And you, <laughs> and you know why? It's been a hundred episodes since he was on. And when, when he mentioned that, I was like, no way. It, it has not been a hundred episodes. You, it feels like he was on here just a few months ago, but I looked it up. It was a hundred episodes ago. Back on episode 91, we had Steve Tower on from After Further Review, and he's joining us tonight for episode 191. You don't look a hundred episodes older, Steve. I, I don't feel it. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for for humoring me with my request. I I was telling Dave before I made it sort of out of jest, like, "Hey, the ninety one should be my <laughs> my episode." I I, I, I was know. shocked when you said that. I, I seriously imagine that a hundred episodes have gone by. Uh, yeah, and I remember we had a hard time coming up with who was who wore ninety one, and it was uh, the worm, right? Is who we Dennis Rodman. We came Sergey up with Benaroff wore ninety one yep. too, didn't he? I think so. Yeah. But but now nobody wears 191. So I, you know. No, 191 is a little shun off an interstate that takes you past the Al Red Sox fan world in Springfield. I, oh, I, okay, always, yeah. I, I always had this thought. Like sometimes I have time to think about weird things. And it's like picture a team that's been around a long time that's retired a lot of numbers. What happens if they get to a point that they've retired so many numbers that there's not enough single and double digits numbers for the team? What do they do? Do they go into the hundreds? Do they use like 17A? I mean, that could potentially happen. Maybe not in our lifetime, but at some point, like the Montreal Canadiens, they have a lot of you know, numbers retired, and I imagine the Yankees do too. What happens if they're like, okay, well. The, the, the Yankees have one single digit number that hasn't been retired. And he just pitched a perfect game last week. Mm. So they're going to retire that now, huh? So Jermaine will get retired, too. This is, um, uh, PJ has a good a good suggestion, batting averages. Oh. There we go. I like that. I, I just, be, you know, put just put asterisks or something. We can put um, yeah, California Seals goals, goaltending save percentages, <laughs> One, <laughs> 191. <laughs> oh, that opens up all kinds of possibilities, yeah. Bears then said the Bears had to stop retiring numbers because they were running out of numbers. Interesting. Yeah, football. Yeah, they got a lot of football players on a team. So, yeah, That's I true. would say, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, but football, certain positions require certain numbers. Mm. Interesting. And so it's not like you have to retire too many Bears quarterback numbers. But, <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. Anyway, hey, ways to get a hold of us here at digital to dice digital to dicecom is the website. That's digital to dicecom is the website. 978-751-DICE is the dice line. Send us a text. digital to dice at yahoo.com is the email. And over on Facebook, facebook.com slash groups slash digital to dice are the ways to get a hold of us. And uh, here in episode 191, we've got a lot of things we'll talk about here we got the community here live tonight on youtube so we'll be talking to them uh we got a couple questions for steve from the audience you know what color socks does he wear things like that you know nothing too hard hitting you know but we got some questions for steve and um we told steve he could pick the topic tonight so steve what did you decide on so uh as anyone that's that's uh watched some of my shows they know uh my uh, um affli- uh, affliction with uh Fictional leagues. Well, that's easy to say. Um, so, um, so I thought we could talk about uh, the different ways fictional leagues are set up. Uh, the fully fictional teams, uh, which I'm representing my New England Minutemen from the Baseball America League. Uh, and then we have um, what I like to refer to as quasi-fictional leagues, where they mix fictional players uh, and real life players, um, and then uh, something that's uh, also very interesting: the historical fictional leagues. Uh, that's where you have real players in a uh, in a what if scenario. Uh, my my favorite example of that is um, the nineteen fifty seven season for uh, second season football from play. Um, they actually released it with um, all the NFL teams, but then they also put out a what if the AFL opened in 1957 like it was supposed to. And so did just a ridiculous amount of research of what professional players would have been available to play on those teams. Wow. Um, and so like a, a really realistic 
um, you know, as realistic as we'll ever get of what those teams might have looked like. Um, and so it's it's an interesting mix of players on teams of like players that maybe retired of just a couple seasons ago to go sell cars because right. they would make more money. So um, what did they do with then, Unitas? Um, I don't remember because I think fifty seven was his first year as a starter in Baltimore, right? And if you go with the beginning of the year, they wouldn't have known that he would have been that Johnny Unitas. Right, uh, right. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, I forget where he was carded. I haven't got that out in a while. But um, So anybody that was actually on an F- NFL squad, they're on their NFL teams. It's the the wow. AFL teams were opened up. And, um, and then they even put in uh, Minnesota instead of um, Oakland because Minnesota was originally supposed to be one of the AFL teams. Uh, so just a really fantastic uh, play. And it was one of those things I would play out a game, and then I would go on Wikipedia and look up players <laughs> and be like, oh, oh, hey, neat. Yeah, like I, you know, so, um, I, I, I actually, I'm willing to bet, Steve, the play community has so many people doing things in it. You know, creating things and coming up with great ways to play the game. I would not be surprised if somebody found a way to take a, a football season in like a spreadsheet or something, take all the players off all the teams into a pool, let you draft them onto teams, and then print out a brand new team sheet with all the players in like a fantasy <clears throat> draft. I wouldn't be surprised if somebody were to do that for the play community. You know, it just it didn't. Didn't they do that with the? Continental League for the baseball release, kind of similar minor leaguers and semi-retired. I mean, Al Red Sox fan was speaking yes. about Al, was yep. showing that off, and that was, um, yeah, a similar type deal that it would be quasi-fictional. And, of course, that never started because the NL put a team back in Queens. Right. <laughs> they got wise. They were like, oh, wait a minute. This, is, this could actually hurt us. And- I read the other day or saw the other day they talked about the cities – that were supposed to be in the Continental League. And seven of the eight became expansion franchises on their own. The only one that didn't was Buffalo. They never got, except for that month, you know, quasi season the Blue Jays played in Buffalo because of COVID. Um, everyone else got a team that was supposed to be in the Continental League. Interesting. So we got a lot of people in the chat tonight. So, again, once we start talking, folks, we want to hear what you have to say in the chat as well so we can include you on the show. Uh, should we get into uh, what we're playing? What do you think? Sure. All righty. All right, Steve, you are the star tonight, so you can lead us off here with uh, what you've been playing. Oh, all right. Well, uh, I have uh, gotten back into my Monday Night Tights series uh, with the face to the mat of uh, the fictional um, wrestling America Federation uh, I just finished a series using the the 90s set uh, and when I going forward uh, it'll either be next week or the following week that I'll uh, start a whole start anew with the uh, the 2023 uh, version of the wrestling America Federation which is the, uh, the most recent set uh, and then starting next Wednesday I'm actually going to be doing a, a preview with the um, on deck baseball pro oh yeah uh, and we're gonna be we're gonna be traveling back to 1986 to try to rewrite some some wronged history tell, tell us a bit about that he released it on your show but for those who don't subscribe or missed it or listen to the pure audio part of our podcast what, sure. what is Ian done? Uh, so uh, it's uh, pre-orders are up right now uh, right. and so it's um, it just uh, tightened up the rule book a little bit. Uh, no major changes uh, from the the first edition of it, but now you get uh, real teams with real players on it. Um, so the starter set comes. I have it off to the side. I want to make sure I get the right. <laughs> the starter set comes with the the seventy five World Series teams. Uh, let's see the thirty nine Yankees, the eighty five Cardinals. Uh, 69 Mets and the 79 Pirates. Interesting um, collection of teams. So, yeah, yeah. And then uh, there are going to be three or four expansion boxes you can pick up um, that um, have a various 
collections. Uh, they're either fall classics or um, just great teams throughout uh, the history of baseball, including some uh, some Negro League teams. Oh, nice! Uh, and all of the cards uh, have a uh, have a drawing of the player on them, uh, which is really cool. So for your your viewers here tonight, oh, is that not going to show? Well, there's that's kind of the cards are pretty yeah. big. It's almost like the size of a paperback book. These cards, it, you know? yeah, they are they are pretty big. But there's there's the Chicken Man himself. So, um, so yeah, I will be kicking that off, um, and then. Boy, is it the week after that? Well, I guess in two weeks I'll be uh, getting on a plane and heading to Denver for the the 2023 uh, Play.com. Oh, nice. Uh-huh. Neat. Nice, nice. Alrighty. Uh, anything else you've been playing? Uh, let's see. Oh, well, uh, Pitcher Maker Baseball um, in the uh, co-op league and the second season of that, uh, we're into July uh, and actually was able to swap the schedules around of some. So I'll be one of the players is going to be at the, the convention. So we're going to play our game head to head. Nice. Um, nice. Yeah. 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 So that was that was kind of fun the way that worked out. And then uh, also just played out a game uh, with the new uh, vintage season that came out for History Maker Baseball, the 1973 seasons. That's a fun that season. Were, uh, I've, I've yeah, been playing that. Nice. I forget what game I'm playing that in, but I've been playing 73 as well. I like to play the A's, obviously. Good team to pick, yes. <laughs> so, nice. Um, yeah. yeah. And I was, uh, so I wasn't very familiar with the 73 Red Sox, um, but they actually had a decent team. In 73, uh, 89 games, second place uh, behind Baltimore. And, um, but they had they had kind of the pieces in place for their 75 run. Um, so they have a 25-year run where they didn't finish below 500? From 67 to 91. Really? Oh, maybe, yeah. You know, I mean, there was some the, – the close calls that we hear about in the, and remember all too viv- vividly in the late 70s and such. But, yeah, they went – I think to not, from sixty seven to ninety one above five hundred. They were always they were a competitive team. When I grew up in the seventies and the eighties watching baseball, they were always you know second third place team. They they were never a, a bad team. It's, they never get over the hump, right? Yeah. Except in seventy five when they got to the finals there. You know, so. In eighty six. Yeah. Man. yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're talking about well, yeah. Hello, Robert. <laughs> 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 And in 1978, yes. In 1978, I was in 6th grade. And every Monday, I think it was every Monday or Friday, one of the two, we would have to clip something from the paper and the teacher would call up and everybody would have to read their article, you know. And mine was Bucky Dent. And I forget if it was from the Boston Globe or the Boston Globe, but I was just like, Bucky Dent. Why Bucky Dent? And I got about halfway through it, and the teacher's like, yeah, okay, you're all set. <laughs> I, I never finished it. I like, go sit down. Someone else come up and talk about something else. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Only time I had to stay after school. Oh, okay, through 82. Still pretty good, 67 through 82. And even in 83, that 78 to 84 isn't terrible. <laughs> So the only time I ever had to stay after school was that day because I started a fight just oh, as no. we were leaving. So the Yankees sucked. And they were, you know, Red Sox rot, Yankees suck, third grade. And I didn't get home until the third inning. Uh, but, yes, we had to stay after for 10 minutes, and the girls who hated baseball just, you know, glared at us for, what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> You're staying. Oh, too funny, too funny. So... All righty. Um, I guess I guess I'll go up with what I've been playing. Um, during the Steam sale, I picked up Franchise Hockey Manager Nine and Out of the Park Baseball Twenty Four. A ridiculous sale. If it's still out there, go get it. Twenty seven dollars for both. Through the twelfth or thirteenth. Yeah, so that is nuts. Days. Yeah, that is nuts. Um, the Franchise Hockey I've been doing. Well, we'll probably fit it into today's discussion. Is oh yeah, is the fictional way I've been playing this and. Um, I'm going back into the early 70s and even 60, late 60s and, and picking up the the Bruins with Bobby Orr and allowing the Russians to play in the league. And that allowed the California Golden Seals 
to get to the Stanley Cup Finals in 1969-70 because they had three Russians on the team. One of them was a center named, uh, I think it was Viktor Petrov, who led the Seals in scoring, and he brought them to the Stanley Cup Finals against my Bruins, who I've, I've loaded up, and, and the Bruins won the Cup. But it was still funny seeing the Seals and the Bruins in the Stanley Cup Finals in my what-if scenario. And, I, and I'll talk a little bit more about that when we get into the fictional stuff there. Um, but I've been heavily into the franchise hockey manager nine. I think it's their best effort so far. I think it's their smoothest effort. Um, franchise hockey manager two. That's going way back. I don't know how many years that goes back now. I don't, I don't know if they do one a year or if they, they skip the year or whatever, but franchise hockey manager two was my fourth most played game on steam until digital diamond come out. <laughs> and, that, and of course, everything I play is through digital diamond now. So it's kind of bumped it down a couple of pegs, but I love Franchise Hockey Manager too. The others I played, they were okay. This one is fantastic. I find it smooth. I love working the contracts now, which I never did because it helps you out. It helps you with the tactics. And just this is the ultimate hockey sandbox for just, you know, start the season with an initial draft and you just get in line and pick your team. And it, that is so fun is when you sit there and you're like, okay, I didn't get Bobby or I didn't get Phil Esposito. Who am I going to get? You know, who's going to be my star on the team? You know, okay, Jean Rattel or whoever it is. And you just get on and pick your teams. It is so fun. I love doing the initial draft. That's what I've always done with, with Franchise Hockey Manager. But now that where they help you with tactics and player roles, they've really done a good job of at least helping you out a little bit so you can visually see what needs to be done. Uh, the team harmony, I haven't figured out yet, but it's kind of fun that uh, – Everybody's mad at Derek Sanderson. <laughs> so there's all these frowny faces and all my guys because they're mad at Derek Sanderson. So I traded him and they're still upset. I'm like, what do I got to do to please you guys? Uh, but that's been really fun. I'll get into more of that as we go along. Uh, the uh, Out of the Park Baseball 24, I fired up, I think it was 1973, Oakland A's. And I played a couple games with that. That's been really fun. I even figured out how to get the old stadiums in there, which before I had a real hard time with it. And maybe they changed the way they did it. Maybe they didn't. I don't remember. But it seems like both of these games now, I'm getting a little bit better at finding out how to do things. I don't know if it's just because I've chipped away at it for so many years or if this, it is indeed better. But I, I'm finding that I'm not nearly as frustrated with either of these two games right now that I'm really enjoying in them and they're flowing really nice and I give them both big thumbs up right now so I've been doing that um, th those are the two main things I've been playing I did play real hockey today and we play roller hockey on Saturday mornings and we play with a street hockey ball not a puck and we got a smaller rink and um, I got the ball on my stick goalie made a ridiculous save and I swooped in I took it up and I skated about to our bench and I'm looking nobody's open Heck with it. I got a good slap shot. Put my head down, and I drove it as hard as I could at the goalie from three-quarter court. F figuring I'd catch him napping, which, which I have several times. This guy tends to not focus on the game sometimes. The captain of the other team sticks his stick in the way to block the shot. It hits the top of his stick. It goes up in the air, just missing the roof. And everyone's following the ball, and here's the goalie. Just look, doesn't have any idea where the ball is. And I says, if that thing bounces, it might go in if it doesn't bounce over the net because it was really high. It bounced five feet in front of him and went over his shoulder, hit the crossbar, and dropped in the net for a goal. Oh, oh my goodness. goodness. Yeah, 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 yeah. And everybody, he's just like, never saw it. It's like, no, it almost hit the roof. It went over the lights and everything and come down and bounced in the net. I'll never forget that one. That was a funny, funny goal. I've had some funny goals. That was that funny. I see that in the slow motion. Slow motion. Just picture like, me the... taking a slap shot. Guy sticks his stick in the way. He hits, goes way up in the air, but I, it just kept on going. And I looked up and said, that could, that could go in. And I looked at him. He's like, he ain't even watching it. And it bounced in front of him. And he's like, oh, oh, there it is. <laughs> too late <laughs> in the net. Uh, too funny, too funny. So good times there at the rink today. But, uh, yeah, so that's mostly what I've been playing, just those two computer games there, having some fun with that. And uh, also just finishing setting up the new computer. I found out that uh, Streamlabs, which is what I use to stream uh, when I'm not using uh, StreamYard, uh, had me set up at a smaller screen size. So I was pumping out 720 for the first few videos. And I didn't realize that till I looked at one of my videos. I, I like to proof, you know, proofread my videos, so to speak. And I suggest anybody that streams do the same. Go look at your videos 
because that's what people are seeing. And so when I saw it, I was like, boy, it's kind of fuzzy. It's only 720. No, when I went into the, the output on my new computer, it didn't have it at 1920. It had it like 1280 or whatever, whatever the 720 version is. Mm-hmm. So I, I bumped it up to the 1920, and now it's back to 1080. So you should see some better videos now. But, um, yeah, so that was that. But anyway, so, yeah, fun, fun times all around over here. Uh, Ron, what have you been playing? I've been on vacation. But it's also kind of weird because I didn't realize what we would be talking about because I've been on vacation most of the week. And what I've done is everything that Steve wants to talk about over the course of the second half of the show. Um, I because someone pop, bought franchise hockey manager and talked about how nice it was. I spent the ten bucks to get franchise hockey manager hmm. and like it. I I would pretty much agree with everything that that you've talked about. And so I made myself as a player, which is what we'll get into most in the second half of the show when we talk about these sort of things. And I, and I wasn't having that much fun. And so I said, what the heck. Let me take the 85-86 Habs and add Wayne Gretzky. Oh, I thought you were going to say you were going to kick him out of the league. Cause, oh, man, that would be awesome. No, they didn't need to see, see Calgary upset Edmonton that year in the playoffs. <laughs> so we didn't need to do that. We won the cup anyway. So you, saw, Lane, you, so you traded who now? So I traded Bobby Smith for mm-hmm. Wayne Gretzky. The computer didn't want to do it. But since it's I'm Lord Mayor and Commissioner, of course it's going to go. The force trade button is the best thing ever yes. invented in the world. <laughs> and uh, I, I, I I added a Guy Lafleur so he would come out of – he might, wasn't he in some sort of addiction thing, rehab? Because he missed two or three years. I thought he just retired. But, but maybe maybe he did. I'm, I'm not quite sure about that. Uh, maybe it was just retirement. So I brought Guy Lafleur back. And so Guy's sitting on my fourth line. So you can uh, edit a player and get him out of retirement? Yes. Well, no, because he hadn't retired. Remember, he would go and play for Quebec in New York. Right. The Rangers. So he was still technically an active player. Okay. Can, so, so yes, I could with Lafleur. I'm not sure I could go through with Gordy at 80 years old. or. I, would, I was going to say, it'd be fun to take either Gordy Howe or Gump Worsley and play until they're like 60. <laughs> Just and see what they would do. Well, my, my, it was Pittsburgh beat me at opening night, and it was Jim Loesch and Nett. Oh. I'll cry it out loud. Yeah. Um, so that's a ton of fun because everyone scores all the time. And so in three games, Gretzky has four goals and three assists. And so enjoyed that. Uh, you told me how to copy my golf courses from one hard drive to another for um, a- or ASG. And so I've been... So I've been playing that, and uh, you know, I mean, poor Brent. D- D- Brent uh, got me doing the perfect team in in OOTP, and at one point I set up a fictional league, and I made myself a second baseman, and so I've been playing a lot of that. I had planned to get started on some replay. I could a baseball replay. I could just kind of pound away on in any of the cards and dice games that I enjoy. I never got to that because it was so stinking hot up here in Northern oh, yeah. New England this week. That, yeah. So I just went with what I had. But it really is – I didn't know what we were talking about until you asked Steve before the show. It's like, no, everything I've played this week yeah. fits in with the topic of the show. Steve, you, you, you're, when you play, you're down in like downstairs or something like that, right? Yes, we have a finished basement. Yeah, that's right. what I have too. So it, it's definitely much cooler in the basement. Yeah. I'm on the yeah. fourth floor. Yeah, Ron's up there oh. baking in the sun. So I, yeah, when when it's hot out and I can't get a cool down here, I don't like to play. But it's not often it that was, it gets so hot that it's bad. I mean, it was 82 in here last night. Oh, and that's where the air conditioner running and and the fan on super turbo was 82 degrees. And so even. Even if I hadn't been on a streaming vacation this week for my wife's birthday, there would have been some postponed streams that just gets too hot. To, yeah. The yeah. You get that light probably makes it hot in there, too. It's the yeah. operator that, that has the trouble with it. So Right. So that's pretty much what I've been playing, and I'm eager to get into this conversation because yeah. it is. Oh, well, you want to do really... that? You want to ask him a couple of questions first? All right. Um, now, the play.com games allow you to do pretty much quasi fictional, pure fictional historical, fictional. Every time I hear that, the name Johnny Tremaine pops in my head because I think that was the first piece of historical fiction we were forced to read in school. Um, Which of those do you prefer to do, Steve? 
Uh, well, I guess it depends on the sport. Uh, so for baseball, um, well, although you're wearing a T-shirt for pure fictional and baseball. Yes, yes. Uh, so I was going to say with with baseball, I like pure fictional, but now um, on Thursday night, Keith just dropped the set out of nowhere um, for a 1974 Continental League. Oh, wow. Um, and so, and it's going to be a combination of real players and fictional players. And now he has this whole timeline laid out where eventually the Continental League becomes Baseball America in 2013. And so... It's like a prequel. A Boston, it's like a prequel movie. It's a, yeah. So there's a Boston Minutemen team <laughs> before they became the New England Minutemen. Wow. They're in this 1974 set. And yeah, yeah. and so there's some play in... Um, so I was going to say that in baseball, I like to do purely fictional, but now that dynamic has changed because there are <laughs> real That's real going to be a terrific storyline because it, you get real players and fictional players, and you can see it's building up to a breakup where one, one group just says, we're going off to be the Continental League and MLB can go your way. That could be a fun little follow. It really could. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then uh, for uh, football games, I've, for whatever reason, I've found recently that I don't particularly like playing fictional. Um, if it's pure like American football, uh, now something like uh, Grid Zone, absolutely love playing with fictional players because you know then you can see them progress through seasons and go up and down. But for uh, recreating American football, I, I, I do like using real players. Um, but I, uh, you know, as we were talking at the top of the show, that 1957 season where you can, you know, play out the the 1957 Boston Patriots, um, and uh, with real people that actually played football, and some like never got a chance to to really star, or some had already retired. Um, I'm I'm going to go out on a limb and say that I am the only person who has a Patriots Sisto Averno jersey. Um, he was a player. He played for uh, the Colts for like five seasons. He retired in 1955, but he was one of the players. He was because he was still young. He was like I think he was 29 in 57, um, and he is put on the Boston Patriots. Sisto, Sisto Averno. Not to be uh, confused with the Ohio players, Disco Inferno, right? Right, yes. <laughs> That's a different one. Um, and yeah, so a few years ago for a, a birthday, my wife got me a, a custom throwback Patriots jersey with Averno on the name. <laughs> so it's a it's a great conversation piece at uh, like conventions and stuff. Nice. So, um, it, yeah, and I like that because it's um, you're creating your own history, but right. you're but you're using you know, real play. And it's not, you know, that's not an outlandish scenario. Right. Um, you know, the AFL almost did open up in 1957 and just bureaucracy and whatnot got in the way. And so, yeah. Um, so I guess in a roundabout way is it depends. <laughs> I, I enjoy, I enjoy them all uh, in certain settings. I enjoy one over the other. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm open to, uh, to playing them all. And the wrestling, You've, you've, you know, you and Dave Little have created online universes that are, I believe, purely fictional, right? In Face of the Mat, or, do, or is that real? Uh, in Face of the Mat, yes. Because, uh, uh, boy, it's been quite a few years ago now, Keith decided that he just didn't want to take the chance on getting a, a letter from Vince <laughs> yeah, saying yeah. cease and desist using my protected character names. And so it, now it's, I, I want to say it's 10 years that he hasn't released um, sets with real players or real, real players, real wrestlers in it. Um, and, uh, you know, and of course wrestling is the kind of setup that you can kind of do whatever you want anyways. Right. And, um, you know, and there are blank cards that you can, so you can make up your own characters and, um, so yeah, yeah, uh, but yeah, definitely wrestling is because the problem when you're using real wrestlers is you're you're gonna want to just push you know like obviously if I was using real wrestlers Hulk Hogan would never be anything other than either the champion or in a storyline. Would you would you ever make a heel 
a good guy or or Hulk a bad guy. I mean, because he would get you'd get letters. You, sure, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And and Ron, and Ron, a said, question oh. for Ron. What, what what do you think about wrestling, Ron? Do it I doesn't think about matter it? what you think about oh, wrestling. Oh. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I always See, loved I've it. Been gone for a, gone for a week, and this is what I. I, 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 I love when when the Rock does that. It doesn't matter what you think. The, the Rock heel run, yeah, I think was one of the, some of the best TV. Uh, he just when he um, it was a Monday Night Raw, and they were in Sacramento, and they he did a he did a concert during the show where he just came out on a stool with a guitar. <laughs> And he sang about how the Lakers are going to be, beat the Sacramento Queens, oh! and the crowd just oh, it was oh yeah, the the, the Rock Hill run was. was I got fantastic. I got a signed picture from the Rock somewhere here. Someone got to be a signed picture of the Rock. It was kind of funny. I went to um, it was either a Sunday night or a Monday night in Worcester, and they were taping one of the shows, and it's the night that uh, it was Mankind versus the Rock for the title. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Mankind had his crew and The Rock had his crew and they're all fighting. And it's like the end of the night and psh, the glass breaks. Stone Cold comes out, stuns The Rock, grabs Mankind, throws him on The Rock, leaves the ring. The ref count and Mankind wins the title. I saw Mankind win the title in Worcester. And that, that was such a good show, such a good night. It just, it, that was a long time ago. They just know how to pump up a crowd. They just, when you're there, oh, they're great when you're there, it's, it's like, oh my gosh, you're, you're yeah, into yeah. it. You're so into it, you know? Yeah. It was a good time. Uh, oh, I just saw the comment. I, I completely forgot about uh, Red, White, and Blue Racing with the fictional um, uh, set that's out for that. Um, I almost wore my property of Exum Racing shirt today. Cause, yes, that's definitely a game that uh, I really have little interest in using real drivers uh in the especially current drive i have no idea who current drivers are so um uh and yeah because you know what's fun about that is you can in your own mind you can make up who which drivers are fan favorites which drivers <laughs> other drivers don't like uh and then it's all and then it's fun comparing notes with people because someone in my universe who i is you know my heel? Someone will say like, "Oh no, no, that's <laughs> he's the good guy." And my yeah, so um, but yes, I, I completely forgot about Red, White, and Blue Racing. Now, Stock Car America. Ron always talks about that once you start throwing dice, it's all fictional. So I so I guess there's different d- descriptions or you know uh, you know meanings of fictional. I you know when sure. you think fictional, you probably think like fake teams, fake players. You know what I mean? You got, right. like I say, uh, the, the Boston Crabs, you know what I mean? And Johnny Rockets, your pitcher or something like that. But, but, you know, fictional is a lot of different things. As soon as you make a trade, like when I first started playing these games here, I, I, I like Reggie Jackson, and I would always trade Reggie Jackson to Boston, okay? Once you do that, it's fictional, but it's not fictional plays. It's just well, the fi- quasi stuff that Steve was talking about. Even in the strict structured do and as played replay, you know, because they're not going to do everything they did in real life in the order that they did it. You'd be looking to go, well, here, Bucky Dent's a 147 hitter, but he's playing the re- against the Red Sox. Let's make him a cleanup hitter. No, no let's not do that. <laughs> okay, let's let's take like someone like Dave Winfield, for example. He may not be doing what he was supposed to be doing, but he's hitting third. Okay, he's hitting 197. He hasn't homered a month and whatever. And the temptation would be to, no, I'm going to move him down or bench him for a day. But, but so, yes, even in that strict adherence to usage, and has played and all that. Yes, the second you roll the dice to take the rubber bands off, you just don't know what's the story's going to different. And and but but yeah, but it's not in the fiction in the sense of as you said the Boston Crabs or right. the Baseball America sets or or anything you can do in OTP. Yeah, so there's a what got- if would be fictional because it's not what happened. Oh, sure. Yeah, you know, and sure. if you think about it, you really got to play quite strict to make it. Non-fictional, you know what I mean. You really got to kind of play it almost right to the T, because otherwise, if you do something weird, that's well, geez, that probably wouldn't happen. So now you're getting into the, you know, uh, the the fictional range. Steve, have you ever um, d- done uh, uh, anything with a fantasy draft, like taken a, a real season and done 
a fantasy draft of any kind? Uh, I've never done a real season. Um, but when, uh, when Hockey Blast first came out, um, the players were not divided up into teams. So you just got a stack, oh, I, however many players it was. And so I just created 10 teams. And I actually did like a draft. I, I remember oh, before kids, wasn't that a magical time? Um, I actually made a, um, uh, a like a post-it note, 10 different post-it notes and made up like a GM demeanor and like, this general manager, he wants the toughest players that are available and just have knockdown, drag out defensive battles. And so when their turn came up, I was looking ah. not necessarily the best player, but who, right. you know, hot people that had a high fight rating, you know, that, um, and, uh, but yeah, no, I've never, I've never done that with a, with, uh, with real players. Before. I mean, dra- dra- draft leagues is the, is the best of both. And you could do that in Strat, obviously OOTP, Ken in action, and, and obviously any cards and dice game you can do it that way, is where you're using real players and putting them on fictional teams. And they, you know, so you could have Craig Nettles or Thurman Munson and Carlton Fisk on the same team, which would have caused massive fights in the late 70s. But right. hey, it's, it's your drafting. And so any, any of those play by mail leagues or face to face leagues, yeah, that, that's all fictional. Yeah. I have Phil Esposito playing with Harmelov, and I my new season coming up. My two goalies are going to be Ken Dryden and Tretiak. You talk about completely fictional, off the rails stuff. I mean, you got teams that guys that hated each other, and they're they're going to be on the same team. So it's going to be I don't know I don't know if it'll work. You know, it might not work. They they might fight each other because that's what that game does. You know, they they have things like that. Uh, Steve, have you ever um? Done anything like what I was talking about when I took Reggie Jackson and put him on the Red Sox? Have you ever like played a season and said, "I want to see how this guy would do over here"? Or maybe put Tom Brady on the Colts or the Jets. Or something. Have you ever done anything like that? Um, trying to think. I um, I know that one year, uh, a few years ago, um, when the second season set came out, um. In like the fringe player list that Keith always has on there, he still listed Colin Kaepernick. Uh, and well, this might have been like four years ago now. Um, and it was one of those years that uh, the Indianapolis team was terrible just because of their quarterback play. And so I actually did. I put I uh, pulled up a PDF editor and put in Colin Kaepernick and played through a few games uh, with him. Um, and using the rest of the regular squads um, to see how they play, and they actually played a lot better. He was <laughs> um, than they really did. So, but yeah, I've never, I've never done like a whole season where I pulled some Hall of Fame player out. Although that is interesting, I would yeah to see. I- always been intrigued because there was a good argument 10, 15 years ago when Peyton Manning was in his prime with the Colts. If you had traded Tom Manning for, or Tom Brady for Peyton Manning, so if Brady had played for the Colts and Manning had played for the Patriots, how well they would have done. I've never done it. You could do it in second and 10. I think you can even roll C or even an action PC. Um, never, never tried it, but would be very curious to see what would happen because Again, we talked a bit a bit about the what ifs. That that would be it, you know. Okay, you know, did Brady win because of his own stuff, or or was Manning a? a you know where I'm going with that. Do you yeah. know what I did? The very first thing when I first pulled away from video games and get into sports sims, uh, the first game I ever played was Football Mogul, and this might have been Football Mogul 2014 or something like that. And I was like, no way. I, it had all the seasons in there. I can play the 76 Patriots, 76 Buccaneers. First thing I did, okay, because, again, this was all new to me, and kid in the candy store, is I traded Stabler for Grogan. And I said, let, I was like, oh, you can do that. I can trade Stabler for Grogan yeah, and see what happens. I mean, again, all brand new to me. I'd never done seen anything like this before. I mean, uh, I played Madden. 
that's it. You know what I mean? And so you couldn't go back to 76 and play Madden. And so I did. I put Grogan on the you know the, the Raiders and Stabler on the Patriots and let that play out. And I don't remember what happened. But that was my first kind of like dipping the toe into the water of stuff here. And I went fictional immediately with that. And, and it was like since then, I, I've always enjoyed that. You know, what if this guy went here? You know, what if this guy was here? What if we traded these two guys? You know, and uh, I've, I've always enjoyed that part of the fiction thing there, swapping the guys, you know. So I've enjoyed that. One thing oh. Al Red Sox fan does a lot of is he likes to take guys, O.J. Simpson, or, um, you know, or, 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 or Joe he Namath. A lot of Simpson content. <laughs> I'm worried about that guy, you know. Um, or, 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 through that line. Or, or like a, a, a Joe Namath and, and have them play the entire season instead of having them either retire or get hurt. And I think he did that with the Rams. He took Namath and went he, to he – He got them to the Super Bowl he did. With, with Namath. Yeah. Hmm. And and that's kind of fun too is, you, you know, someone gets hurt. And so, like, what I'm doing with franchise hockey managers, Bobby Orr is not going to have a knee problem with me. He is going to hmm. continue to play even if I trade him, which I'm – you know, I'm having fun with this, Steve. This is like, a, you know, again, this is a, it's one big hockey bath, this franchise hockey manager nine. And I'm scrubbing all the fun all over myself. You know? <laughs> but it's just the idea that, you know, I can I can do whatever I want in this thing. And so Bobby is going to continue to play. Now, whether I, I move him or keep him, I don't know. I haven't decided yet. Uh, it's just kind of I'm just kind of willy nilly in this thing here. But but the but the idea of being able to play players through either career-ending injuries or, like, Tom Brady missing a season. You know, maybe I play that season with Tom Brady and see how they do. You know, they were 10 and, what, 10 and 6 without him. You know, so what What if he was there? Could they have won a couple other games and, and maybe back to the Super Bowl? So those things there are all under the fictional umbrella, I guess it would be. Because, again, we think fictional, you think fake players, fake teams. But once you start swapping guys or having guys play when they're not supposed to, it's mm-hmm. really under that fictional umbrella. And, and I guess the more I think about it, the more I probably enjoy the fictional more than I do the, the actual. Because it, we've already done the actual. We've already done that. You know, mm-hmm. Now, now we, we have a, a chance to tell a different story. Mm-hmm. What it, and, and, you know, Ron talks storylines all the time, and I'm finding more storylines in the last couple of weeks with these, you know, franchise hockey manager and, and out-of-the-park baseball than, than, than I've had in a long time just by playing this fictional setup. Now, now, here's something I've done that we haven't talked about yet, and I'm sure we all did this in the days of, of, of the Sega Genesis and all. That's true. Ted Williams and Joe DiMaggio had been traded for each other until one of the one of the owners sobered up and realized what in the world was he doing. I think it was the Yankees that called that trade off. Hmm. Um, so here's something that we all did as kids with the video games is create ourselves. Nin- oh, yeah, ninety nine, all ninety nine. Yeah, yep. I'm the greatest thing since sliced bread. And um, so what I started to do in the golf game, uh, ASC golf, is you can create your own card. And so I did some videos with my own card and started that. I, there's a guy over at Delphi, Philip, and I can't think of his last name. He does does things with the Fitzsimmons. You, 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 you oh, yes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And so yeah. um, it, 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 twins and stuff like that. And, and, again, he really just has a good time with that, just to create in the card or taking someone and putting your name over it or whatever. He does a lot of that. And so I did that with the golf because I think when you do golf it really is into the what if thing anyway it is so hard to get even if you have all the right players and all the right tournaments and stuff like that because the course conditions can change so rapidly you you really can't do that as as played and if you're going to play Arnold Palmer versus Tiger Woods in both of their prime that's pure fiction anyway so I've done I did that with myself and really enjoyed it because who knows, you know, if circumstances hadn't was different, um, if that had been the case. And so I've done that in, um, yeah, so I've, I've done that with, um, tried that with, with franchise hockey manager and not in a real sense, no OTP because the league I'm in, in for that is all fictional anyway. But, but just kind of playing these games as yourself. Now, Gardner has the advantage because there was a gentleman that just passed away by the name of Dave Gardner, who was a decent player on some bad teams in the 70s. 
And so if Dave wanted to do that and say it was him, hmm. he could. I, I've been, mis- no I've been mistaken for that guy on Facebook a lot of times. You know, R- Reggie Leach. You know Reggie Leach from the Philadelphia Flyers? Um, he reached out to me one day because we, we were both in a California oh. we were in a California Seals uh, group on Facebook, and he goes, "Dave, how you been? Haven't talked to you in a while." <laughs> and I reg- and he sent me a friend request, and so I said, "Reg, I'll be quite honest with you, I'm not that Dave Gardner. You know, uh, we have the same name. I know who he is. You know, through you know watching him play. But I said, I'm not that Dave Gardner. I will still love to be your friend." And he he accepted my friend request, and he came up to Boston with uh, Walt McKechnie and signed autographs about six years ago. And I met him there, and it was kind of fun. You know, that, that kind of happened. I get, I get all the time. Um, who was the goalie? Uh, PJ would know if he's here. Was it um, the co- Cobra? Was that, was that Gary Smith, PJ? Uh, and he's always sending me messages. Hey, Dave, how you been? You know, now that Dave Gard has actually passed away, you know, I don't get him anymore. But he, he was always thinking I was Dave Gardner too. And I'm, I'm like, well, no, that he was, you know, a good 10 or 15 years older than me. You know, I mean, I'm, uh, you know, not quite that old yet, but... Um, but yeah, so I mean, I, I like to create myself too. In fact, in, in, now that Ron brought that up, I mean, okay, PJ says, yeah, Gary, uh, Gary Cobra Simmons was the goalie there. So I, I've talked to him a few times uh, on Facebook. Um, but R- Ron brought that up. He said, you know, Dave, I'm going to create myself in franchise hockey manager. And I was like, you know, I haven't done that in a long time. I think I created me and him in ASG golf, <clears throat> and I played a little bit of that. Um, excuse me. Sorry about that. Choking on something over here. Oh, and um, and so, so I was, I'm going to create myself a franchise hockey manager. And I, but I don't know what I'm going to do because there's already a Dave Gardner in the file. So I don't know if I can be a second one or if I got to be a, a junior or something like that. But I think it would be fun, you know, to create myself and run and put us in there. But, but I don't know if I'd want to just do a completely fictional league with that. Like I did that in OOTP. 20 or 20, 22, I think it was, as I created a fictional baseball league. We were the, we were the Hartford hash Browns <laughs> and there were, there were eight teams and they all were breakfast related. We had the pancakes, the hash Browns, uh, the bacon, uh, the sausage biscuits. So it, it was, it was a fun little league. And Ron was my, uh, I was the second baseman cause that's what position I played. And Ron was my, my, my closer, you know? So, so Jacket would come in out of the bullpen. We had a theme song from, you know what I mean? And he would come in, you know? <laughs> and uh, but I mean, so I created myself, but it was all fictional players. But it might be kind of fun to drop myself, or Ron, whoever, in, into the NHL past and see how we did. You know, you know, picture me. Hey, you know, I, I got you know Gardner scores from Esposito and Or. That would be a trip to see in the box. Yeah, score. I mean th- that that you know is why we did it in the video games. And in fact, we could in Wayne Gretzky hockey one which came out in 1988 or whatever. I got it for Christmas, 89 or 90. We were able to edit the text file and took out the Blackhawk team that was there and changed it to our street hockey team Mm. at Linden State College, a food-based league. Yeah, no pineapple pizzas there. (laughs) And so we couldn't get – so no one had a capital letter for a name. And I'm not sure we could change – I think we could even change the ratings. Again, this was – on a PC mm. in 1989 or 90. And it was so much fun to go. So you're playing it because Gretzky was on the Oilers and Gretzky was on the Kings team. I think the game came with six or eight teams or whatever it was. And so, yeah, you could, you, you could be beaten up on, on Lori Boschman or, or what? Yep. Gretz PJ did it with Gretzky three. So, yeah, I mean, we've all done it. And again, I, it's, it's kind of like that going and buying the candy bar it gives you that little bit of a dopamine rush. You go, I could have done this. But how, how fun is it though? When, when you're playing and you're in there and, and you contribute to the game, I mean, it's oh, just, yeah. it's just so fun. You know, in fact, when I play, you know, what, you know, like hockey bones or apple, and I have the card on the table, and there's my card on the table. It's not me, but there's the Dave Gardner card on the table, and he has a chance to score. It's so cool if he does score on my channel. It's because again, on, it's just, on the other on the yeah. other side of that in OOTP, if I strike out with two out and runners on second and third, oh. I'm mad at myself. <laughs> how, how could how could I swing at such a crappy pitch? <laughs> you know, so it kind of goes. But but yeah, if you hit the big hit or see, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yes, yeah, see, PJ and I, except for 
I really didn't know much about the California Golden Seals until I got hooked up with Gardner. So, <laughs> and uh, Smelly Wrestling Geek says, "Wait, whoa, 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 oh. whoa, whoa!" Smelly Wrestling Geek types in and says, "As long as you are not making yourself a superstar, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why I'm going to put myself in there as a 150 hitter or a, or a 20, you know, 20 goal now, scorer." Now, two times I've done that, I'm going to be I've a star. Smelly as Wrestling a rookie, Geek. so I can grow with the game. Oh, there you go. And so you don't want to come out at 17, 18 yeah. years old and be the 400 hitter yeah. with 60 home runs. And, I, I see what he's saying. You don't want to go in there and just, just max yourself out and just walk through everything because it's like, that's okay. Did, you know, in NHL 94, 95 for the Genesis, 99's all across the board, and I could score from the blue line at will. I'm ready. Yeah. I mean, there, there's some fun in that, but it, do, it does get old after a while. You you want to feel like you're part of the team and you're contributing to the team and the whole bit. So I, I see where he's going with that, but, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to make myself a bad player, am I? <laughs> you know? Yeah, well, Ron, earlier you were, you were talking about that, uh, that Fitz, Fitzsimmons on the Delphi forums. Right. I believe that he always, uh, I remember seeing a lot he did with the uh, replay basketball. And I believe that he would always make himself as like, you know, the third person off the bench. He was like yeah. the, backup, the backup small forward or something. A he's great wasn't. story. Yeah. And because, you know, it would be, I mean, we watch sports for, because we like it. And, you know, I think we've all had, even me, um, it, you know, thoughts of, boy, wouldn't that be fun to be out there with whomever? And it, that you can do that. Again, you can't, if you win a championship, you can't go around and brag about how you did this and that because they're going to, you know, okay. Right. So, you know, padded room time for you, young man, but, um, yeah. or, or now that we're in our 50s, old man, but, um, but yes, I just think that. It just gives it enough variety. Yep, Fred B33 on Delphi is the Fitzsimmons guy. And he's a pitcher for the Phillies and the Twins. And as you said, you know, a role player. He's not the superstar. He's a role player. Yeah. But his contributions make a difference. I uh, I So when I'm playing the franchise hockey manager nine here, I've stacked up my Bruins with Russians. And, you know, I picked up Rene Robert as a rookie and a few guys like that. And I've I've won the cup back to back seasons. Okay, I finished first one season, second the other season, and, and won the cup. It's so, so I kind of get that out of my system. So now I'm like, okay, now that I've got that out of my system, I want to really kind of work on a team and not just bring in a powerhouse. So I'm thinking about trading away some of my better guys for average guys to see how other teams would do with the better guys, and then me with the lesser guys. So I mean, I've been kind of doing something like that. So here's the other thing that you've talked about, Dave. And I'm not sure Steve, you could do this, Steve, in kind of like a, I'm not sure you could do it in cards and dice. Uh, you could if you owned a lot of that. Um, yeah, we all play the fictional manager, too, especially in no OTP. Mm. Um, you can have random starts for players. So you could get rookie Gordy Howe with old Wayne Gretzky. Right, mm. yeah. Or That's called random rookie, debut, yeah. Random debut. So you can do it in OTP. So rookie yeah. Tom Seaver pitching to old Mike Trout. Oh, you can do that in the can. baseball game too? Yes. Oh, nice. I haven't done it, nice. but you can. And I think you can do it in the context of whatever framework season you want to do. Um, and again, it's, it's that sweet spot of everyone being real. So it's all names that you might know compared to just whatever your, your universe is. I, I, I haven't done it. I'm tempted to do it. Um, I remember when they first did that. I think we were talking to Jeff from Franchise Hockey Manager about how that all started. And that might have been the first year they did that. Uh Oh, maybe, maybe I had him on the Game Hounds. We had him on the Game Hounds a long time ago. But the random debut, was, he was very proud of that, and he should be, because that's very interesting. Because the first time I tried it, I think I had a 19-year-old Gordie Howe and, uh, like, a 35-year-old Patrice Bergeron. You know, that's what it does. It just it just grabs all these guys and just gives them a random start date, and now they're in your league, and, uh, you know, so, I mean, you, again, you could have a 30-year-old a Connor McDavid and a 19-year-old Tiny Thompson or something like that, you know, or whoever, Guy Lafleur or whatever. And th that's just another wrinkle, the fictional. Again, Steve, you got us on this fictional track here, you know what I mean? <laughs> and there's, <laughs> it, it, there's so many things that are fictional that we, we really don't even consider fictional, but Random Debut is another fictional You're thing. Right. 
it, it, again, as you brought up earlier, it's not just the Boston Crabs and the Miami Teamen. It's it's whatever it is that gets you away from a stock replay. You know, let's not talk about Gretzky and Strat and trying to get to his points. <laughs> uh, that that's a whole other. That's 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 Ro- Uncle Rod's pet peeves on, on OnlyFans. <laughs> Soon. So, so, Steve, because you primarily a cards and dice guy, what yes. would be the equivalent to that for you? Like a draft league, if you just did different years of different card sets, or yeah, I guess it, you could just take a few different years and just shuffle them all together and deal them out like a deck of cards, and right. Is that something get. that sounds appealing, or or would that be? You've got um, so many storylines that it would be difficult anyway. But yeah, well, and also my, I don't think my OCD would <laughs> would take <laughs> mixing up season sets. I would just, I'd be like, ah, oh, I need to put them in their correct pile. But yeah, I would not. That would not be enjoyable. If, never if watch you, a Tebow. Eat, never watch yeah. a Tebow video, Steve. Yeah, if you need help oh, really? organizing oh, your yeah. card, just watch Tebow's videos. Oh boy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> just, just the thought of mixing season sets up gets me a little flustered. Okay, yeah. I can see the sweat beating up on yeah. you just on that thought. <laughs> yeah. But, so, so yeah. what, what, what is your f- it, when we talk about fictional playing? What is your your ideal way of playing fictional? What, what would you consider your favorite way to play fictional? Um, well, if I had to pick one, it would be fully fictional, fictional, fictional teams, fictional players. Um. Just because then um, it's it's so freeing, then I, I get to decide who you know who's the poster boy for the league, who's who's the uh, the bad guy. You know which teams are popular, which teams have have a history of championships. It, it's all I can you know how to pronounce a player's name on a live stream. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> my, 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 my closing pitcher on the Hartford Hash Browns was Ron Juquet. He was Juquet, French. Yeah, he was French. <laughs> no one can say, actually, <laughs> it's pronounced. <laughs> the um, Juquet residence, the gentleman of the house speaking, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so uh, definitely uh, fully fictional would be, if I had to pick one type, that would be my, mm-hmm. my favorite. Okay. Now, have you? How much have you actually done with what we would call a stock replay? Not a lot. Yeah. Just, just because of time constraints and whatnot. Um, the only like fully stock replay I can actually remember doing is I played out the full season of the 2011 Red Sox using the replay baseball team. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, uh, and the only thing I remember about it, it was uh, it was one of those things that reminded me why I like playing cards and dice instead of on PC. It was it's like after a while, I was just sort of <laughs> hitting the space bar and like, oh, okay. And then I remember it was just Adrian Beltre, you know, did really well. Um, I don't know if it's changed. Um, it was so long ago. I, I had a PC. I, I've been a Mac person now for over ten years, um, and uh, so I, I I don't play it anymore. But um, but I, I remember when it got to the end of the season, I assumed that it would then set up playoffs, <laughs> and it just sort of unceremoniously dumped me back to the main menu. <laughs> and it was like, oh, oh, I guess I guess this is done. <laughs> like, oh. um, so yeah, but I've um, I've never actually played out a full. Um, well, no, I take that back. Uh, now with fast drive football, uh, oh, okay. I have now done two seasons um, where I've done a full replay. Uh, one year I actually rolled out every game for every team, and then last year I rolled out every game for the Patriots, and then um, well, and then twelve games with the or. Um, 12 games, 18 games with um, my King of the Hill. So two random teams that would play that week. And then the other ones, I just used the uh, instant results chart. Um, so, but yeah, but, um, but yeah, so I've done uh, two full season replays. Okay. Fast track football. So. Have you tried the stone cold hockey fictional teams? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I had a video of it and um, it's, uh, I guess what it is, it's hockey doesn't grab me the same way 
as as a baseball or football. I was I wasn't I wasn't in a hockey family, so that's like when you guys start saying who was the goalie on the seventy four team. I just I'm. Yeah, we're gonna have to let you go, Steve. We're gonna have to let yeah. you go. <laughs> oh, you're breaking up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. So uh, yeah. Um. But yes, no. I, I do. I do like the fictional ones. Uh. And like I was saying before, uh, with fictional, especially with um, the Stone Mountain games, the grid zone is fantastic just because of how quickly you can create your teams from you know from whole cloth. And I then played that one with that weird deck. That Gary didn't have the rights to. Oh, that was a long, yeah. That was a long time ago. Grid ball. Grid ball, right. Yeah. And so I just did, turned cities of teams into things. So I remember the New York team had Dwight Gooden, Babe Ruth, and Tom Seaver. Just because you could. Right. It's like, you know, again, it's all about just keeping it interesting in your head while you learn the game. Interesting. Yeah, grid ball. Yeah. Ball. We're uh, we're talking with Steve Tower from After Further Review. If you're listening on the podcast, as we uh, record episode 191 live here on YouTube, uh, just wrapping up the Stone Cold Hockey. Gary did a terrific job with that. When you got the game, you got a little little booklet. It wasn't very big, but it talked about all the teams and and you know good or bad. The teams that were having issues. So obviously the the bad team, which I think was the Dayton Bombers, I don't even know if they survived into the next season, but he came up with a second season and now he's working on a third season. And and, and it's kind of neat that he's trying to drag you into this this fictional hockey league that's going on. And um it was really fun to see how he, you had some teams that were this and some teams that were that, and uh, I thought that was it was pretty fun and pretty unique. It really was. Yeah. Uh, I was just gonna say I wish that more companies would do that, especially for if it's a fictional league. Like, give us a history. Um, you know, even if it's just something brief like that. So that, you know, so that you're not jumping into it like, oh, my God, because I, I think that that's what puts people off sometimes from fictional leagues that they're like, oh, my God, you mean I have to I have to name the teams? I have to, like, create a schedule? And then they're like, oh, I'll just I'll just replay the 85 season, you know. And, um, so, yeah, that, that is that's definitely a, a, a high point of that is giving you a history of the teams. And You must, Steve, have found, because you do a lot with the Baseball America sets, that it, it – it, for real players, you kind of know what the stat well, you know what the stats are for the year, and so when the new set comes out for Strata or Appa or, or, or History Maker Baseball, you know what's going to be on those cards if you know the game system really well. There must have been a couple times that you've taken that new set and had someone that was a favorite of yours. You could see him aging out and be disappointed, like it was watching Jim Rice in the late eighties. Sure, yeah. Where the, yeah. Where the classes do? Well, yeah, or gets moved to a new team. Right. And you're like, no, no, no. He was my setup guy. Like, what? <laughs> he can't be on the other team. And yeah, yeah. But, uh, so, I, yeah, because I, I look at, when I play Baseball America, I look at it that I'm the manager of the team. And so I can't control what, you know, the big wigs up in the suites are doing. Um, I can only play the team that's, you know, that they give me. So um, They're not letting you buy the groceries. They're not. Yes, they're right. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Yep. <laughs> hey, so what was? What do you think would be your favorite fictional gaming moment? Uh, let's see. That's that's already happened, or what would my ideal fictional no, so, moment be? Something that you've already played. If you, if someone oh, says so, yeah. so, you enjoy playing fictional. What what was your favorite fictional moment? Anything come to mind? Yeah, um, I I think that I talked about it a hundred episodes ago with, with the the very first season of uh, the Baseball America. Um, I actually played out. Um, I think I did a sixty four season, but I played everybody's games, and so I was like keeping notes of like who was injured. I had my own system for keeping track of uh, relievers fatigue and stuff. Um, you know, so I really got to know each team very intimately. Um, and it took me so long to get to the end of it that by the end of it, the, the next season had already come out and I had received it. And so I knew that, so there was this one player on team number 12, which in my league at that time was the Cape Cod lobsters. Um, and 
his name was Doug Smoles, and he was the only player in that first initial set that got the special home run legend status, where you have to have the full home run king and the full slugger qualities. Um, but he was also, I think he was either a semi-sad sack or a full sad sack for his batting average. Um, and uh, so in my mind, I came up with a story. It was like he was the, he's the player. He's been on that same team for years and years. Everybody, like, comes to the stadium for him. Um, and But now it's come, he's, like, come to the end of his contract, but he doesn't, you know, he's going to play one more year. And so I knew he – and his card was, like, really downgraded for that le- his last season. And – so it was the last home game for the Cape Cod Lobsters, and um, they were down three to nothing. And it comes to the seventh inning, and all of a sudden, the three batters in front of Doug Smoles <laughs> get on base, and it was just like, oh my god, he's gonna. <laughs> He's got a chance to give his team the lead. And in my head, I was like, well, obviously, this is going to be like Doug Small's bobblehead day because it's, <laughs> it's the last home stand of the season. You're killing me, Smalls. You know, and yeah. <laughs> and, um, and sure enough, he hit a grand slam. Uh, and, it just, and it was just like one of those moments like, oh my God, that was, you know, that was because I could like see it coming up. I'm like, oh my God, he's batting, you know, he, I think he was batting like six that inning. And um, yeah, the base is loaded, like one out. And, he hits a grand slam to give his team the lead, and they, they won the game. And, and, and it was an otherwise – what was uh, really interesting is uh, at that point, that team was – they were eliminated from the playoff race. You know, so I was sort of just going through the motions of finishing out the season because I had, you know, kind of committed to it. But, um, you know, it was a moment that I would have missed otherwise if I wasn't doing a full replay or if I had been like, oh, I'm just going to quick play, yeah. you know, for the teams that are eliminated. And so, yeah, that was that was definitely – it was – cool. Yeah, yeah, it was just in my head. I could see the, you know, the Cape Cod crowd, <laughs> everybody wearing their retro Doug Smoles jerseys. And, <laughs> That's funny. Uh, yeah. So do you do, when you do your streaming on your after for the review channel on YouTube there, do you mostly do the fictional? Or is it a split? Or what, what would you say? I've probably done more fictional just because I've I've streamed so many games with the Baseball America um, and then otherwise it's, yeah, probably a good mix. I mean, I guess it depends on what is coming out. Um, you know, if I'm reviewing a new game and they only have real players and, um, but, uh, but yeah, I would say it's, I don't know. Math is not my friend, but I, I want to say probably it's a good 70, 30 split. Okay. How, um, how does the, uh, how does the fictional stuff go over on the stream C- compared to like regular plays and regular seasons? Well, um, I have some people that love it. I, I have people that specifically <laughs> want to come and watch the Baseball America teams play. You know, there's people that uh, – Cross is somebody who will always be on the streams, and I call him the president of the De La Rosa fan club because every time he gets a strikeout, he you know he types a K. As, as, it's like he's hanging a K out on, the, on there. Um, when I do the red, white, and blue racing – you know, there's people that have their favorite drivers from those fictional sets because those that's that's been out for ten years. So there's some drivers that have been in every set, and um, uh, so yeah. And then, um, you know, when I'm doing a real season uh, with real players, it's um, it's different because then people come into it right with their own with expectations, biases, expectations, right. you know. Oh, this player wouldn't be pitch hit for yeah. you know. <laughs> um, so I was go- uh, I was going to ask if if it was harder to do a stream with fictional. I mean, harder to get people involved because you got to make a really good presentation and a case for why you want to watch these fake fictional players that never existed versus coming into a stream with existing players that everybody knows, but you just made a really good point that if it's a fictional league, then, you know, no one can sit there saying, hey, I wouldn't play scrubbly do here at this point here, you know, so so there's, there's probably a trade-off there, I would imagine. It, yeah, it's more freeing, uh, I guess I'll, I'll use that term again, because, yeah, because then I can just, I can just sort of, you know, get into my, my inner uh, announcer and you know, and holy cow, and how about, you know, and not worry that, like, oh, God, would I bring in, like, the fourth best reliever here? <laughs> I mean, let me pull up baseball reference real quick and see who, you know. Right. Um, so, 
I guess uh, I feel like I can put on a better presentation with fictional, um, you know, unless it's a team I'm intimately familiar with. Like if I'm playing out the 2007 Red Sox, I would know who, you know, who's pitching where, you know, what, uh, who would be yanked early. And um, so, uh, it, you know, so there's certain situations, but yeah, just overall, I feel like uh, it comes out in my presentation <clears throat> when I'm okay. Pouring it out for the fictional and, and Dave, you, you when you did the spiders, and no one alive <laughs> has any recollection of what they did. We know the story that they really were terrible, but it wasn't like we had video or interviews of these players. It was, although it was all real, it was pure fiction in that way that we didn't have any expectations outside of the fact that the team was beyond horrible. <laughs> Yeah, and they were sabotaged. Let's be fair. They were sabotaged. Oh, absolutely. If anybody playing I mean, that good, was, that was, was Major up League team, yeah. 100 years before Major League. Yeah, mm. yeah, it actually was, yeah. Uh, mm. Let me ask you, Steve. If a new game come out, we'll call it baseball because I think you're a baseball guy. So a new baseball game comes out, you know, so-and-so says, hey, I just developed a new baseball game. Would you prefer that it had fictional over real? And if it had just real, would you shy away from that because it wasn't fictional by chance? I wouldn't shy away from it. Um, I guess my my first reservation would be, what does your game do different than the hundreds of <laughs> of baseball games that are out? Um, you know, so I'd be interested to see if someone could actually come up with a new take <clears throat> on baseball. Um, but no, I wouldn't. You know, I wouldn't say that I, I can't show a game because it doesn't have fictional. Um, players on it. I'd be more interested. I'd be more intrigued, and probably someone would would reach out to me instead of another YouTube channel if it didn't have fictional. Oh. Yeah, I, interesting point um, you, you just made there. Now I just lost my train of thought. What you were talking about? Um, oh, as far as a, a new game. Okay, that's where you were going. You said, what, "What's this game going to bring? It's going to be any different than what's out there." I. I see. I, I like the idea of people developing new games, even baseball, because you know there's a hundred baseball games out there. Where Bernie with Bernie had the count. I forget what the count yes. was. Bernie had the count. I don't know if it was eighty nine or ninety, but Bernie it was at least seventy five. Yeah, so we'll call it a hundred baseball games. So someone comes out with game one hundred and one. I would like to see that because you you never know what a game is, how it's going to register with you. And, and I and I like, like I play a bunch of baseball games, and there's some I really like, and there's some I don't play as much as others. Uh, but like season ticket baseball is a rather new game, I would think, mm-hmm. it, within the scheme of things. Okay, sure. and and I really like that game. It's really kind of an advanced game, but I pick and choose my advanced rules, and the mechanics of that game just work for me and they speak to me and they have since I rolled my first game and there's other games that I struggle with and when I struggle I don't have as much fun uh, so I like the fact that people are making games because they might come out with a game that's like you know something this game this hits a note with me it flows on my table I'm enjoying it it's got seasons I like to play and I, and it's a you know I, I guess I'm golden corral guy like Ron says I play all different games but so I I like it when I see a new game come out so I could check it out and s- see if it's a good fit for me. And and sometimes they are and sometimes they're not. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I never want, like, people to stop innovating. I never want someone to be like, well, I have an idea for a baseball game, but I'm not going to pursue it because there's been so many. Like, that's, um, you know, so that's why I'm saying, like, no, I would never just turn one down and say I can't show it offhand um and uh but yeah yeah because well i mean then uh, on deck baseball that was uh is that three years now that that's been out could be yeah it could be um, we had him on a while ago yeah. yeah yeah you know um and uh you know that does some things really well um uh it, well and also when that came out it was all fictional um which you know intrigued me right away but you know and that's just just one man just yeah <laughs> I, I had some fun with it I, just, I had no. the game and, and I had some fun with on deck baseball I really did like I think it was the pitcher fatigue system that I thought was really interesting I think 
you, you, you get to a certain point, and don't, is it like you roll dice and look at his card to see if he goes up or down? I thought that was interesting because it wasn't a steady decline. He had some ups and downs. Most likely you're going to be down because you're getting tired. But I, I really did like the uh, the way he handled the pitches. Uh, after a while, the, the big cards became too clunky for me. I'll, I'll be honest with you. They were. And, you know, seeing the picture of the batter is it's good, I guess, but I would rather have a strat or an apple-sized card with just the ratings on it and be able to play that on my tabletop because I really can't play that that big monster card set, you know what I mean? And I think that would cut down his cost and, and the whole bit and make that game much more affordable. Uh, so there's a couple of things that I really liked about the game, but I, I shied away from it for, for a couple of reasons as well. Uh, but now that they got the, the new things coming out, maybe I'll go check that out again. Um, yeah. Slash Deep Gaming comes by. Howdy, y'all. Thanks for coming by. Does fictional basketball grab you at all? I don't know if there's a way yeah. right now to do that or, or not. Yeah, on the, yeah. Table. Uh, the uh, highlight maker hoops. Do, does he have Some a way. fictional set? Yeah, yeah. yeah the, the Blam the Baseball Blam. League of America. Yeah, <laughs> yep. Or the Basketball League of America. Sorry. Yeah. Right. That would be that would be Blam. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. All right, I got one more question for you. Then we can take some questions from the audience here. Um, right. So you said you played. What was it Grid Grid Zone Grid Bowl? What was that? Grid f- Zone. Well, both. It was Grid Ball first. Okay. Uh, and then now it's Grid Zone, and now it's Grid Zone Turf Wars. Okay, so that's a completely fictional sport. Yes. Okay, so that's yeah. not seven, that, on, seven on seven. Okay, so that so that's a whole new sport that you'd have to learn what that sport is and how it does. How many of those? Fictional sports have you played? Is that the only one? Have you or have you played other games that were kind of their own unique thing? And 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 what else is there out there like that? Um, someone well, actually came up with Quidditch from Harry Potter. You can oh, actually really? oh. play that. Yeah, there's there's actually uh, people that play Quidditch in real life. Yeah, there's in yeah in Boston. There's like a whole uh, league of people that hop around and. <laughs> in the park on their on their broomsticks and, um, <laughs> and play Quidditch. Um, Surprise! Salem doesn't have a team. Then that would be perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah well, I mean, there's yeah, there's been uh... and Smelly Wrestling Geek says it's big. The big cards makes it easier for blind old men to see. Yeah, no, I I, I get that. You know, I do. There, yeah, yeah, there is that. Um, you know, so there's uh, games like uh, that Bat Flip uh, card game that just came out, and that's all fictional players on it. Um, let's see. Um, what else have I... I don't know if I'd want to get into a whole fictional sport. I mean, I like my my big four, and that's what I enjoy playing. Um, somebody asked yeah. me earlier here. Oh, a oh, uh, fictional sport. Okay, fictional yeah. Sport. Um, I... Let's see, I, Somebody yeah, asked if I would get into soccer. Soccer is kind of a fictional sport for me. <laughs> I, uh, I I have Dice United one, and I played it, and I got through one game. But I don't know enough about soccer in the terms and how it plays to enjoy it. I just I played it, and it's like I think I played it right. It was okay, but I'm I'm kind of lost. I mean, aside from I really enjoyed the PC version of, of Dice United. I, I saw you play that. That's I'm interested in that. I really am. Oh yeah, somebody uh, made the comment. I, um, the the Fury, yeah, the Fury football and Fury hardball games. Those are uh, those are uh, those are great. It's uh, so the Fury um, football is is that seven, that's seven on seven as well. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah, that that's that's a lot of fun. It's a nice, quick playing game too. All well, it's it was made with fictional teams and fictional players, but then uh, he has put out some sets where it's real teams. And, uh, I think he did like the uh, the Pro Bowl players and made cards of them. Um, and then yeah, and Fury Hardball is like this mixture of like baseball, cricket. Uh, in wiffle ball, kind of together, it's kind of hard to explain, but it's it's another fun game and, and a very very quick playing game too. Um, so yeah, there's there's things out there. Um, if uh, 
I guess if you didn't want to get into a fictional teams and players for real sports, and but you'd have an easier time with a, a completely fictional game, yeah, there's definitely definitely things out there for you. Nice. All right, let's take a couple of questions from the chat room and also from Facebook here. Uh, and um, yeah, uh, Sports Time Machine has a good one here. Uh, Steve, have you ever reviewed a game on your channel and gave it a bad review because you just didn't like it and it did nothing for you? Um, I don't think I've ever given a bad review. I try to find the good in everything. <laughs> Um, I mean, definitely there has been some games where I have said that, you know, it didn't resonate with me, but here it is. And I can see, you know, um, you know, if, if you're looking, if this is what you're looking for, you know, here it is. Um, I'm trying to think there was one negative review I gave and, and it was for a, like a collectible card game, a baseball card game. And... Um, it was something that, like, after it came out, the guy sort of disappeared, and I. It was like kind of the equivalent of a pump and dump, <laughs> I think. <laughs> um, and I can't even remember the name of it now. But it was. Um, I, I remember, like, so the rule book that came with it. The rule book was only like four pages long, and it was like just very, very basic rules. And then it had a link in the rule book to a website for advanced rules. And it was like a, I don't know, like a 30 or 40 page PDF. Ooh. And it was oh. just, so I did, I called that out. I'm like, yeah, you know, there's a difference in, yeah. And then, um, but yeah, so I think that that was probably the only like real negative review I've done. Um, you know, I will say that there's been some games that I just haven't reviewed because I didn't yeah. want to, you know, I explained to the person, like, I don't think that I can, give you any benefit from me? I, I've, I've done the same thing. I, I've said, look, I've gone over this and looked at it, and I said, honestly, either I'm not understanding it or it just doesn't look like it's a lot of fun, and I don't want to get on here and say bad things about it, you know. Uh, there, yeah. there has been games that, that I've had on the channel that I, like like you said, I find the good at it, and, and I say, look, yeah. there's fun to be had, and if this is what you're looking for, you're going to like it. Myself, it's just not my cup of tea, and I have too many other games that I'd rather play, but, um, and there's some people that swear by that, that game, uh, game X or whatever it was, and, it's like, and that's and I get it. I get how you would like that, but for me, uh, I'm the same way. Sometimes it's just like, yeah, I'll show it off, and this and that. No, just not my thing. Just not my thing. Steve, you know? has, there, has there been a game that you kind of looked at before you turned on the camera and didn't have very high hopes for, and then as you went through and played it, it would, oh, oh, I get it, and I like it. Um, yeah, um. That's a good question. Let's see. What, yeah, I'm trying to think what the what the latest one that just happened a while ago. Well, actually, season ticket baseball, okay, um, is one. Uh, when you, I didn't first you have a it. crazy ending to the World Series, though? I did. Well, yes. t- tell us about that because that was the, I watched that live. Yeah, yeah, sure. So I, I replayed the the 1990. Uh, well, actually, I started in the 1990 NLCS um, with my my favorite historical team, the Cincinnati Reds of 1990. Um, and so they beat the Bucks, advanced to the World Series, and actually the World Series went to Game 7. Um, and it was a 0-0 game into the, I think it was the seventh inning, and um, it was, uh, who got the hit? Or who, it, Barry Larkin was at first base. So who would have been? I think it was Paul O'Neill was maybe batting. But anyways, just like a, a slow grounder to third base, and Carney Lansford picked it up and uh, went to the rare play chart, which season ticket baseball, uh, I will say, probably has the best rare play chart. Yes, yes. So I, I, I had Ron Say get an inside-the-pock home run. Oh, nice. With a rare play. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. Um, so, yeah, so the rare play in this instance, it was Carney Lansford – just picks it up and rushes the throw to first. Uh, it sails over the first baseman's head, up against the wall and right field. And then, um, <clears throat> so the the rare play said that the runner at first gets to third. <clears throat> and if you want, you can send him home. And so it was Larkin rounding third and uh, Canseco fumbling the ball in right field, picks it up and throws it and doesn't get it in in time. 
Uh, and that was the only run of the game. That was so the, the Reds won game seven, one to nothing. On a real, uh, on a real play, yeah. On a real play, so yeah. yeah. See, that's uh, the, the, when Ron Say hit the end. flood. When Ronce hit that inside the park home run for me, it was a rare play, and he hit it deep, and it said the uh, the outfielder crashed into the wall, and the ball oh. was sitting there, and it's a triple, and you can try for home. And I did the same thing. I rolled, and he scored on the play there. And, you know, when I said that, a lot of people, oh, I don't know, Ronce, I would never hit it inside the park home run. I'm like, he would if the outfielder hit the wall. It was unconscious. Yeah. You know, anybody could. I could run around the bases if the, if the ball's just sitting there, you know. You, yeah. you know who I saw hit a, a highlight of, a, of an inside the park home run? We've talked about Buckner doing it a couple times over the years. But Dave Kingman did it in St. Louis. It hmm. scooted on that turf and got past, I think, Willie McGee or someone out there. And Dave Kingman hit an inside the park home run. And they're interviewing with Kiner's Corner after the game or whatever. So how would you feel? So my legs were so heavy around in third. I can't believe I got <laughs> It's a lot easier to hit him over the fence than it is to hit him in the park. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, so I, I wanted to tell that rare play story there because I remember yeah, watching that yeah, live. That was, a great, um, that was a fun one. Oh, and I'm just – I'm looking at my list – so definitely the perfect thing for this um, is uh, the game Mo Master. It was, Mo Master. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so it was, um, I think it was a holiday special um, that Clay okay. had. Okay. And what, what it was is they wanted, oh, no, no, it was, a spe- they had gone to a convention. And for the convention, they wanted to be able to have um, business card sized games. So a game, the board, the instructions could all fit on a business card or like a folded up, you know, two. Right. And so, um, and it was actually, it was uh, designed by um, Mike Fitzgerald uh, of uh, board game design fame. Uh, He helped design it. And it's just a circular board and your, um, your lawnmower is a, is a D6 and the next space will have two numbers in it and you roll two dice. Um, and if you match the numbers exactly, you get to move up, but if not, you can like, uh, decrease your die, you know, to spend that. But then, you know, and you're trying to be the first to get it around the board. And it was a game that was like, well, a game about mowing lawns isn't. Yeah, be fun. when you said Mo Master, I went M O apostrophe Master. Yeah, no, um, I thought it was like a rap game or something. Right, and it was. Oh my god, it was so much fun. And what was great is that both of my kids loved it, and because uh, it's it's the kind of game I you could probably play it with like six people if you had like small enough dice to get on it. Um, and they loved it. It was great. It was, you know, it, it was like you got a, a little bit of math involved, some some very, e- you know, easy but um, meaty strategic decisions to make. Um, and, yeah, it was like such a – and it was like so cool, that the fact that it was on a business card, that it was, you know – That is so cool. You don't need, you know, 100 miniatures and <laughs> – all these plastic pieces for, uh, you know, for a fun uh, game experience. So, yeah. Interesting. All right. A couple more questions here, Steve. Um, uh, Marco Scola, we've had him on the show. We all know Marco and his channel Marco. over there. Yeah. He was all excited that we were going to have Steven Tyler on the show. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> he's on vacation somewhere, so he's probably reading that on his phone. He's like, yes, yeah, Steven Tyler's on Digital oh, wow, Today. Yeah. What a get for the show. Well, for everybody that was tuning in, for Steven Tyler, I'm sorry. I... All I'm going to say is, Marco, that if you think we're going to get Steven Tyler on the show, Dream on. Keep, keep waiting. Oh, oh yeah. come, come on. And if come you, on. That was pretty good. That was pretty good. Oh, and boy, if you yeah. like puns, you don't want to miss a thing, right? <laughs> wow. Oh, Steve has now canceled the he show. Was, <laughs> he was lifting on the edge uh, waiting for <laughs> yeah. the episode to drop. So, yeah. It was uh, George Hendrick that, by the way, the, the uh, ball scored to pass in St. Louis. Oh, for Kingman. Kingman. Okay, yes. Yeah, so what's Time yeah. Machine here in the chat room says it was uh, – uh, George Hendrick that uh, did yep. that. All right, get back to some of the real questions now. Here's one here. Okay, here's one here from uh, from Tony. He says, who is Steve Tower? <laughs> who is Steve Tower? Oh, boy, Steve Tower. He's a he's an enigma wrapped inside a, a conundrum. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. <laughs> that sounds I mean, like something I had for breakfast the other day at the diner. Oh, 
<laughs> well, like, it's high in fiber, right? Um, <laughs> we'll pretend it is. Uh, there we go. Yeah, there we go. Oh boy. I, yeah, I, 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 I know we were talking about this before. I mean, it, really, what you see on my show—that's me. I'm, I'm not playing a character. I'm, uh, you know, I'm a. Uh, I'm a, I'm a, I'm in my late forties. I'm not in my fifties yet. Thank you, Ron, for saying that. But, but um, it, <laughs> and uh, yeah, no, I just, I'm, I'm, I'm me. There we go. A great you player. Thank you, Doug. I, yes, I, I, I do have to thank my wife for that. Um, boy, this was about six years ago now. Um, during the summer, my wife is a music teacher, um, and uh, she was just bored one summer while school was out. And she was like, I'm going to organize a, um, an adult ukulele class and we'll just host it here at the house. And I was like, okay, I guess that sounds fun. And so I bought a ukulele and sat down and, um, was like, huh, Hey, this is, you know, Find some perfect. Arthur, God- Arthur Godfrey videos on YouTube to learn how to play. Oh, uh, I mean, you, I guess you can watch those. But the, the nice thing about the ukulele is um, you can learn, like, three basic notes that cover, like, 90% yeah. of the song. And, and a lot of them are just one finger. Yeah. So it's like, you know, it's, I mean, in 10 minutes, you can be playing something like, oh, hey, you know, so. You do the uh, seventh inning stretch on the ukulele on your channel, you baseball. And, and I saw that. It says, I, how can I one up him? So I was going to get my electric guitar, plug it into oh, my, my amp, and I was going to do like the Zach Wild version of Take It Out oh, to the Ball man. Game. I haven't done it yet. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, you know, I'm sure I, I would be there. Yeah. Yeah. Four legged like creatures in your house would be down to visit you mo- yes. oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I thought about doing that one time I might do that maybe, maybe what I'll do is like I'll film it and I'll drop it in as a video or something just to just kind of have yeah. some fun with it you know any excuse get the wah wah pedal out right that's yeah <laughs> yeah yeah it's a fun time alright so uh, that's, that's who Steve Tower is by the way with being in your 50s there Tower yeah I know. No, no, I know. I, I was, it was when you said that I was like, "Hey, hey, wait a minute! I still got a couple of years, right?" <laughs> All right, it, his, it, this is going to be a tough question for you. All right, this is from, this is from Tebow, and he says, oh, um, God. "Yeah, he says, do, do you, you know, do you have a main gripe with the big two game companies at all?" No, I don't have a gripe. Um, you know, it's uh, no, I don't have a gripe with them at all. I just, um, I guess, really, what it comes down to is. Um, the main driving goal of my channel is uh, to uh, promote the smaller companies and showcase games that people otherwise might not see or might not even know exist. And everybody knows the big two companies that, you know, that wants to know about them. My videos are not going to help someone who's been on the fence for 50 years (laughs) decide to play them. Um, you know, and I feel like there's been some advances in board gaming that the big two haven't embraced. Um, you know, so they're games that I don't personally enjoy. So, um, but I don't have a, a gripe against them. I mean, if people enjoy them, that's great. You know, that's a, that's uh, a good point that you make there. That they, they they're the big two. They've been around for a while. Pretty much. They've stayed kind of in their lanes. Maybe a couple of small additions along the way. Don't, please don't flame me for that, anybody, because I'm new to this. But but from what I've understood, that that they're they're been around for a long time. There's been some changes, but for the most part, they've they've kind of done their Close thing. Close a rolling strat. But but I just think that you know with all the newer games that come out, like I say, the season tickets. You got the history maker baseball. That there's all kinds of different games that are quote more modern. And, and not that that makes yes. it better or makes it worse, but, uh, you know, the, the, the two games do it their way, and they do it great. I like playing them both, by the way, okay? And I have played them both on my channel. I don't know if I like one over the other because they do different things. But I also like, like I say, the, the, the new game, like the season ticket baseball. I really liked it. The pocket pennant run. I like that, you know, and I like playing those. And yeah. So, so, yeah, I see your point that, that you know, maybe, I mean, the, the, they're tried and true, you know, but some of the newer games do some things a little different. 
and 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 so that that could be a reason why too. So yeah. If, if you didn't catch us a hundred episodes the last time we had Steve on, when, when he talked about his background, was that he didn't grow up as a sports gamer. You know, yeah. it's, you, you, you're a board gamer yeah. traditionally, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so 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 that's understandable that that, that would be there because play approaches their games very much like a board gamer would as mm-hmm. opposed to the big two and how they presented things for for a long time and if you didn't right. grow up or that is your first first way that you were introduced to the gaming then yes you know that that would yeah. color yeah. how you see them yeah. yeah and there's you know there's so many channels that feature strata up uh, that I yeah it's like I guess I don't feel like I would really be able to add anything productive to the conversation for it. So. I, I play both of those, and I, like I say, I play a lot. It depends what I'm in the mood for. Sometimes I, I get the app up behind me, like, I'm going to play a game of app, and I pull it out. And sometimes I, I pull out strat baseball. I love the strat basic baseball. I really do. I, I couldn't choose between the two because they're both just so fun for me, you know, and I don't have to choose. You know, I can play either yeah. one at any that's time. That's right. And that's you him. never have to choose. Yeah, best thing about it. Uh, baseball Demo says he wants to see Uncle Ron sing a seventh uh-huh. inning stretch, channeling his inner Enrico Palozzo. Take me out to the ball game. Take me out to the crowd. Why, why do you sound like Bugs Bunny? <laughs> to me, that sounded like Stephen Hawking, but. Um... <laughs> Uh, let's see, Bob's Tabletop Sport. One of the best things Steve's channel has done is to build a community of sports yes. gamers. Yes, absolutely. Uh, very similar to what uh, this channel has done as well. Community is so important for this hobby. It, it is, Bob. That's a great – it is. And, and, and that's why, you know, we have a lot of people on this channel. And, you know, and I've seen, um, you know, uh, baseball demos jump on a couple of channels as well. Uh, the Replay Gamer has been doing some things. And it makes it really fun. It really does that, you know, the community kind of – you know, we're we're all well, let's put this we're all gamers. We just want to play games and have fun in our basement by ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's, you know, nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with yeah. that. But let's let's just face it. You know, you you know, it's like I couldn't go upstairs right now and tell my wife what a great game of franchise hockey manager nine I just had. She would look. <laughs> right. You know, that that's nice, dear. Did you take the trash out? <laughs> you know, right. That's what I get on that there. So, but yes, community is a is a big part of this, and it's it's so much fun. Uh, Bernie's got a question here. Steve, you've been playing these games for a long time. What keeps you wanting to continue? to play these games um well that's a good question i um well i I mean i really think that my channel helps because um you know sometimes i'm having a terrible week and um but kind of like as soon as i hit live on my channel and uh you know and then i'm afr steve and i'm just having fun and playing out a game and uh so yeah sometimes i use it as a <laughs> as a nice emotional crutch and to get away from the real world and, um oh, yeah absolutely you know, it's uh because in you know in my baseball universe it's it's a beautiful it's a beautiful day and yeah so um the community definitely um is a big part of why i keep playing um you know just to see what you know, I enjoy watching what other people are doing, seeing what other people are doing. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's, a. Uh, I guess it's, it's cathartic, I suppose. It's one of the few, uh, low tech releases <laughs> yeah. that I have left in my life. And so. baseball demos posted in the chat room, therapy. Ther- therapy oh, yeah. exactly. I mean, I don't know how many times, you know, you got a bad day or just, you know, whatever bad, well, anything, you know, life, life is, is, is hard for everybody. And sometimes you, you come down here and you play your game, whether it's on the tabletop or the computer and it just, you start playing and it just puts a smile on your face and you're just like, this is great. You know, I got, you know, Bobby Orr on the table, or I got, you know, Cam Neely, or Kalia Skremski, or, you know, Fred Lynn has hit two walk-off home runs and replayed PC baseball for me, and I think I streamed them both, actually. Yes, you did. And it's like, you're sitting there, it's like, oh, Freddie Lynn coming up, bottom of the ninth, game tied, runner on, 6-6-6, six, 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 home run for Freddie Lynn, and it's just, I, you just can't. You can't replace those moments. Those moments there, with the, and again, that's something that happened probably two years ago now, and I still talk about it. And it's just, it's so much fun. What we do is just pure fun, 
nobody gets hurt, nobody gets angry unless you put in the wrong relief pitcher. Okay, that can happen. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but yeah, and, and, and Bernie says, yeah, that, that's the perfect answer to get away from the real world, and that's what we do. We come down here, and we have our fun, and and Ron and I talk all the time, and it's, you know, with the franchise hockey manager, I'm like, Ron, guess what? I just picked up, you know, this guy, and guess what? I just traded for this guy, and then he's just like, yeah, well, I got Wayne Gretzky on my team, and it's just, it, it's it's just what we do, and we get away, and we we talk about this stuff because it's it's talking about such positive things most of the time occasionally there's a game that rah, 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 but i mean for the most part we're in a good mood when we talk about these things you know uh yeah, yeah. getting back to the chat um uh you see uh cory asks uh he can't watch it live saturday but he says what, what equipment and software do you use for your videos Oh, sure. Uh, so I use OBS uh, to, for the streaming software, and that's a free program to download. Um, uh, let's see. I um, Oh, well, <laughs> I have an Elgato camera for my overhead camera now, which um, <laughs> you're talking about your computer problems. <laughs> so my uh, I have a Mac computer, and my Mac was actually so old that I was not able to get the program to run that you need to download for your Elgato camera. I've had that happen with the computer too. It's like, yeah, this won't run on here. Sorry. So I, yeah. So I was like, well, 10 years, I guess that's a good run for a computer. That's great. So, yeah. so I do have a new, I knew I do have a new iMac. Um, now, um, I use a, um, a, uh, an app called reflector, um, it's Reflector 4 now, and what that does is it allows me to um, either project my iPad or my phone onto the screen so that I can then capture it so I can put up a score sheet or a scoreboard. Um, I do get a lot of questions uh, anytime I'm playing a baseball game uh, or uh, I've used it in a couple other ones. I have an app called Swipe Scoreboard. Um that um, I use like all my baseball games. I put that up there. I think and I have great. that myself. That's a fun one. It is, yeah. So it's it's free to download, and I want to say you can use it with one sport for free, and then you can upgrade it. And I think the upgrade's only a dollar, and then that unlocks. Yes, yes, I have that one. Yes, ten yeah. different sports. So yeah. Um, so that's so what I usually do is I have that on my phone, and I project it onto my screen. Um, and as long as that reflector program doesn't decide to just disconnect the <laughs> that's what happened the other day yeah i saw like, that yeah yeah i was like where'd it go it like, I was like hey the scoreboard still says the third inning and like, what, what was the thing you had it was about six months ago you were streaming something and you kept leaving something in the way was it the rules you left in the way there was something that was oh yeah so i it was uh with season ticket um i had the pdf of the rare plays up and i just had a setting on obs like so i could you know, have it viewable or not viewable and it would come up so people can <laughs> read it. And I would just forget to click the hide when I was done reading it. And so I, yeah, I'd go through an inning and it half my face. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I remember that. Yeah. That was funny. Yeah. yeah. That was funny. Um, things like yeah. That. Um, yeah. I, I, I did sell a couple of Elgato cameras. Yeah. I think Al yeah, um, too. I think, Oh, and then I have a, a, a blue uh, microphone. Um, that I use for my audio. So I think that that's the only equipment that I use now. So yes, the, yeah, the Elgato camera green, has been fantastic. Green, it green, just, is that green screen behind you or is it virtual? It is a green wall. It's a green wall. Yeah. So when we got our basement finished, um, I was I was able to... Um, so that's not your bedroom with a green screen? <laughs> no. <laughs> That wouldn't go over very well. Um, What's this green wall, honey? It's for my streams. Don't worry yeah, about it. Go to sleep. It. Go to sleep. Um, By the yeah, way, no, I, I was able to pull if you're just interested. <laughs> yeah, I was. I was able to uh, carve out part of the basement to be my office, and they painted one wall green, so I'd have just a nice flat surface. So, uh, so yeah. Nice. Yeah. I bought. Um, I have a an Elgato green screen, and it it pulls up, and it's really nice, and it stays there. The only thing is it's only so wide, so I have to have it, like, right against my back to fit the screen here. They come out with a new one. It's an Elgato XL, and it's supposed to be, like, 14 inches wider. So, perfect. Put it here. It doesn't have to be right behind me. I can put up a green screen. I can do some things with it, right? I've ordered two from Amazon, and both have been damaged in shipment and never made it to me. Oh. Yeah. I ordered it, and it's like, 
uh, this order's canceled and we'll not get to you and we'll refund you your money. It's like, okay. Ordered it again. Huh. Same thing. Three days later, it gets to New Jersey. It's been destroyed in shipment, so it's going back. So I don't know what the problem is with that. I don't know where I got to order it, for, order it from. But so, um, yeah, I'm trying to get a green screen myself, but I, you know, I, they just can't get it to me, you know? They can't get it to me. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Smelly Wrestling Geek says the chats are typically positive as well, too. Yeah. You know, we lo- I, you know, I loved coming on here, you know, with you guys and just chatting sometimes. And we just, you know, we just chat away and we have, you know, people come in and talk about what they want to talk about. And, and that's, it's a great way of kind of, it, you know, it's like, it's like you know, when you listen to the radio, sports talk radio, something like that, and people call in and talk about stuff. That's kind of what we do here. And it's really kind of fun. Uh, baseball demos. I drive all day for work. I don't listen to the radio. I listen to YouTube videos and whoever has uploaded a video. Helps me stay connected with the community. I do that, too. You know, I walk my dog. I listen on YouTube. I go to bed at night. If someone's streaming, if, like, you know, Al or somebody's on late, you know, I'll, I'll listen to him while I go to bed. Or if somebody did something during the day, I'll put it on and listen to it. Yeah, it's kind of like it's like my AM radio, you know. And if I'm playing here, if I'm in Studio B and I'm playing something, uh, I'll have somebody on, you know. And, and that's how I was playing something here that night that you had that crazy rare play. You know, I was playing something on the tabletop, and even the other night when your 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 reflector went down, uh, I was you, you were on my screen while I was doing something here when it went down. So so yeah, I I, I like to watch the community myself and, and listen in and the whole bit. And so yeah, yeah, that's another good. Yeah, one. yeah I, and I think tying back into when someone is asking if I've ever done a negative review, <clears throat> and, I, and I think the reason I tend to stray away from that is there's enough negative things happening in the world right now. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I don't need to come on and poo-poo on someone's <laughs> creation yeah, or tell exactly. people that they're wrong for liking a certain game. It's just, you know. I've, I've just, had to do that. I've had a couple of people send me a game, and they said, what do you think? And I, I just said, honestly, here's what I think. And I said, I'm, I'm not, I'm I'm not going to lie to you. I said, this is what I think is wrong with this, and this is what's wrong with that, and this is probably why I wouldn't play it. And, you know, it's, it's, it's something that maybe you could fix or work on or change or something like that. But as it is right now, it, it's, it's something I'm just not interested in. And, and I don't know how many people would be because of these reasons. And, I, and I'll give them reasons, you know what I mean? And, sure. But I, there's usually something I like about it, you know what I mean? Uh, and it's like, oh, I do like this and I do like that. Um, but th- there, was, there was one. It, there hasn't been any recently, by the way. This, I mean, this was going back a couple of years that there was a couple of people that sent me games and – um, and I just remember reading the rules and looking at them like, mm, no, this ain't going to work for me, you know, just, just not that. But that, and everything recent that's been sent to me that, and the stuff that uh, hasn't come out yet that may come out or may not come out, I've kind of enjoyed. You, you know like. what I mean? Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. So, so that's kind of good. Uh, getting back to the questions for Steve here. Um, how many different games have you reviewed since starting doing the videos? Ooh. Yeah, so um, I saw that question, and I actually went through my videos and looked it up. It's um, sixty. Wow, I've wow. had sixty different games that I've um, either reviewed or done playthroughs on. So, so yeah, that's a Which lot. Which do you prefer, a review or a playthrough? Well, I only do playthroughs now, um, <clears throat> just because I've kind of found I feel like. Um, for myself, that's more valuable to me to see someone actually play the game rather than put up a edited, you know, video of here's the highlights and you know I actually want to see here's how you set the game up here's how long it takes to actually play through a game um, you know here's what it looks like as you're rolling through it or flipping through it or what have you and um, so yeah so I, I I only do the playthroughs now I don't I haven't done a I gotta say though, Steve, that I still, when I search out for games, you know, and I'm not saying new games, but games that I haven't played, so they'd be new to me. Mm -hmm. I I found myself back at your channel with some of your really old stuff where you did all the editing, and you're like, okay, so we're gonna roll the dice here, and it's a four. Now, if we look at this guy's card, a four is this, and those really help me learn some games. And I know that editing is not fun, and it takes a long time and the whole bit, but I, I've gone back to your channel so many times for games that either I'm thinking about getting or refreshing myself on, and those videos there were some of the best ones I've seen for the game. Oh, thank you. you know, and I thought you were going to say you saw the video where like you'd roll the die, and there's like a jump cut, and, <laughs> and no. it goes to a different result. Like, oh. 
some of those were were really good, and I and I get you know they're they're kind of not fun in the whole bit, you know, because it's a lot of work. But those really helped out, you know, me to get started with with a lot of games. With just kind of how you did that there, um, and I agree. I like seeing people play the game, but um, I'm a big fan when I'm learning a game. I, I love how Stratomatic lays out their rule book, where it's like roll the dice. Here's what could happen. And let's go through that. So I love when people do, okay, we're going to roll the dice. Instead of just playing a game, okay, roll, okay, strike out, walk, single, fly out. Doesn't really tell me anything. Show me why this is happening. And, and, I, and I love it like in the Stratomatic rule book when it's like, okay, if you roll the dice and it's this, here's what you're going to do or here's what you're going to check or here's what you're going to look for. If it's not that, then it's going to be this, and here's what you're going to do. And I, I love when I'm done reading. It's like, okay, I know exactly what I'm going to do with the dice roll. And, and that's what I like when people do because it's, you know, let's go over a few scenarios. Okay, here's pitcher A and batter B. And, okay, here's this. Here's what happens. Don't, don't go to the next batter yet. Stick with this batter. Show me some more scenarios. Hmm. That's what I like. I like to see, you know, because anybody can just play a game, and it's like, okay, here's the game. It's great, but... Give me a few scenarios. I want to see how difficult this game is to learn. It, you know, is it is it something I'm interested in? Is it too simple? Is it too hard? You know. So for me, I, I like to see, you know, different variations of, of what's going on. And and I sometimes try to do that. And when when I do a thing like, hey, here's what you can do here. Here's this. Here's that. Um, I, I enjoy that rather than just watching the gameplay. Now, if you're doing just a the gameplay, then that's fine. You know, because we know that we're here to watch a game. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. But if you if you do, I've seen a lot of people try to review games and they just play it. And it's really right. not helping me learn the game. I'm just watching you play the game. So this is not a tutorial. You call it a tutorial, but it's not because I'm not learning anything. I'm just watching you play, you know? Um, Generally and- what I try to do now, <clears throat> if it's a game that I'm showing for the first time, is I'll play like half speed for the first whatever, inning, quarter, half, <clears throat> and and try to do things like that and explain why it's happening. And, and then I'll even say, like, oh, okay, and as we get going, I'll, you know, get up to uh, to full speed, um, you know, and have that sort of um, be the stand-in of, of the uh, the review or the tutorial um, and for that. But, um, yeah, I mean, you know, I guess never say never um, <laughs> about getting back into the reviews, but... Um, I don't know, maybe when the kids are out of school <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I have no nowhere to drive someone this weekend. Yeah. I, can- <laughs> I just found out that Windows 11 has a built in video editor. And so it's something I want to I, I want to try. I might I might try to do that because, like I say, it's a pain in the neck. But if they get a video editor that can handle it and, you know, it's only a five or ten minute video it might not be that bad. So I might yeah. I might try to get into a few more of the that stuff there but I, like yourself when i play apple hockey or something like that i'll start off real slow and i'm like okay we'll start off kind of slow then we'll pick up the pace so we can just kind of get on with the game but i do like you know starting off slow sometimes unless i say look i'm playing a game tonight this is not a tutorial this is me just playing enjoy it for what it is you know uh doug says uh he likes the way you explain games thoroughly and it's steve steve helps in learning the game yes he does thanks doug. yes he does um, so anyway, so we're going to wrap up the podcast part of this. We might stay on for five or ten minutes and just chat in the chat room, but let's let's wrap things up. Any final words, Steve? Oh well, thank you for having me on for the the annual annual. It's the show. it's the hundred show annual thing. <laughs> two so, years, buddy. We'll see two you. Years. In, see you in two ninety one. Yeah, sure. Because <laughs> two ninety one, then you're starting to get into uh, you know some pretty good batters at the two ninety one. So yeah. Um, yeah, but yeah, no, thank you guys. Uh, and thank you for all you do, uh, in the community. Do you guys put out a lot of great content and, uh, I'm, I'm happy to, uh, to be a a small part of the, this great board game world that we have here. All right. Absolutely. Ron, any final thoughts from you? Uh, you know, next week is our fourth anniversary. Yeah. The end of July, we're having a special show, right? Uh, We got to figure out when that's going to be. It's next week. We did we, we mid July. I think it's the seventeenth. Is our fourth anniversary. Well, we're going to pick a Saturday night. What the plan is, Steve? Right. Is it, that but, when but so so the, four, year four is going to end, and right. year five begins. So what we're thinking about doing is having like a Saturday night extravaganza where we have people jump in here with us on StreamYard for a few minutes at a time and just kind of go through. We want to invite everybody that's been on the show. 
And then, you know, some of our Patreons, uh, you know, invite them on just to kind of say hi. Just kind of have like one big, like a, re- a wedding receiving line, so to speak. You know what I mean? I'm not, I'm not kissing you again, Dave. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if this is going to work very well, but it might. You know, so spitting out for from when you had that. So just kind of have like an open invite and set up certain times for people to come on and just say, you know, you come, you you know, have you on from you know seven thirty to seven thirty five, and you for seven thirty five. I don't know if it'll work. It might. It sounds good in theory, but yeah, we're kind of hoping to uh, have have all cast of characters come on and help us celebrate starting up year five. Is what we're kind of. Last word for Steve. I just remember when I looked at doing some of this stuff on YouTube that he was one of the first channels that I ran into. Which tells you how yeah, long yeah, me too. Yeah, him and Al Wilson, and, so was and like, um, yep. And there was another so guy, was, um, uh, D- 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 Dave from California, and he, uh, what is? I forget his name. Uh, D- it was like D Dave or D Baseball, something like that. Okay. And, and he took his channel down. And oh, he, really? he was so good. He had he did Downey games. He did shootout is that hockey. The husband and wife. He had the lovely Lisa. I think it was his yes. girlfriend. Lovely Lisa was on there with him, and his name was Dave something, and, it was, and his channel was D, D. So it was two D's and something else. And I forget because I think he took it down. But it was so oh. good. That channel was so good, and I learned so many games from him. And he had the plastic dice tower that made so much noise when he, when he rolled the dice. Like, ah, my ears, you know. But loved his channel. Loved his but, channel. But when I was trying to think of a concept to do. It was Steve's, you know, along with high encouragement from Al Red Sox fan. It was seeing Steve's channel that went, oh, there's an audience for this. People will watch. Because, you know, you can put anything out there, but it doesn't mean people are going to watch. But, but yeah, so. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So it was one of those first encouragement yeah. videos to see there's actually people who comment and watch this stuff. Yeah, Ron, Ron finds he has to wrestle with a banner to get likes. But, I mean, you know, that's. Uh... That's the you only. Know, the, that's the only fans in you. That's the entrepreneur in you. <laughs> I'm coming up on 1,500 subs, director. Nice job, nice job. Yeah, and, and you're on Twitch too. So, yes. anyway, all right. Uh, let me see. So let's fade out of here. Let's get the music going, and we'll get some final goodbyes, and we'll stay on for a few more minutes on YouTube. But we're going to end the podcast here. So here we go. So you've been listening to the Digital Today's podcast, episode 191, with Steve Tower from After Further Review. We talked a lot of fictional stuff tonight, and we found out how big that fictional umbrella is. Ways to get a hold of us. DigitalTodice.com is the website. 978-751-DICE is the text line. And over on Facebook, Facebook.com slash groups slash Digital to Dice. And Steve, where can we find you on YouTube? Uh, on YouTube, you can uh, just search for at AFR Steve or just search for After Further Review with Steve Tower. All right. And, Ron, you're on Twitch at what now? Retro Sports Network. Over on Twitch. That's where he goes. All righty. Thank you both for joining us today, joining me today, however it is. And we'll talk to everybody later. Steve, we'll see you in 100 episodes. Sounds good. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs>